<laughs> All right, so we talked about the single mag and the dual mag. Air, most aircraft have what? Single Two mag. singles or one dual? Single. Two singles. The only one that has the dual is the Lycoming, and the only a couple of them, like the um, IO 360A1B6D. It's that D right there that tells you that it's a dual mag. You just work, you, you'll remember this stuff. You just work on them long enough. It just, that's what you do. All right, so, do, 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 do a mag. All right, so that's the high tension. So that's what your magneto is. It leaves, Steve, when it leaves here, would you say that's high voltage or low voltage since you were the one that stuck your finger in there while I was turning it? High voltage. Yeah. <laughs> would you like to do that again and simulate, show the class what it looks like? No, <laughs> Did he get you too? It got all of us. <laughs> Is he touching you? Yeah. He got all of us. Well, and then I somehow got punched in the nose. Punching me, so I jumped to him. Well, that earlier <laughs> All right. Good rule of thumb. When I ask you to do something like that, you probably shouldn't. Isn't that right, Matt? Because <laughs> last year, what was it? I, he, he timed the magneto, and I said, well, you want to hold on to all these leads while I spin it through? And he says... Sure. Sure. And so yeah. I did. <laughs> it was how confident are you in your job? Yeah. Oh, that's right. I did that too. Well, that's that's one of the tests that I get. I don't make you. I'll never make I you shock yourself. Know. But if you time a magneto to an engine, which you will do, and I say which one is going to fire next out of four, and you say this one here is going to fire next, Kevin. I'm going to say, well, great. Let's take all the ones that aren't going to fire and you put them in your hand and hold them all and grab onto the engine. Let's see if you're right. If you're wrong, I will know by the expression on your face. <laughs> and it's rather funny to watch them go, was it right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can I back up and do it a couple more times? <laughs> All right, so that's the high tension. All right, so the opposite of that is a low low that tension. <laughs> low tension. Um, so low voltage. Right now you're thinking, I want that one. <laughs> Red wire, blue wire. Low voltage leaves the magneto. Leaves the magneto and must be transformed through a transformer and must be transformed into high voltage by individual by individual um, coils what's that kind of like coil and plug yeah, like, like, well, and that's sort of how modern cars do it now. You have one, one coil for each, each spark plug. So you have low tension. So basically, you're just going to have in your magneto, you're going to have a primary, but no secondary. So you've got the magnetic circuit and the primary circuit. Then it leaves the primary circuit and comes up around to a coil right next to the spark plug where your secondary is going to be. And it goes from secondary right to the spark plug. Now, still a distributor? Uh, we'd still have a distributor to distribute out the low tension. Okay. So it's going to just, but everything's going to be the same, except the secondary somewhere else. Is that more efficient? Uh, at one point it was. And the problem was if you go way back, I want to say, what, like uh, pre World War One, around World War One. Now you notice I'm looking at Prince because he's a historian. He's a great historian, he really is. Um, they didn't have the technology to build good harnesses. And so you can imagine the ignition harness, that's the, the lead that comes out of here that goes to the spark plug. It's called an ignition harness. The ignition harnesses weren't, weren't well built. They didn't have the technology. And so you have an ignition harness with, say, 20 to 40,000 volts running that far away or touching a piece of metal. And what would happen is the spark would just find its way out. It's like, well, instead of going over there to the spark plug, it's just easier to go through this bad rubber that you have and go right to ground. And so you would just start losing your ignition. I mean, you get no spark because it's going everywhere but to the spark plug. And so the solution was to go low tension and run it through low tension leads, which they could contain, they had insulators good enough 
to get it to the coil, and then from the coil, just a very short little hop into the spark plug. Right? Yeah. Ah, it's, it's easy to, this wires is more uh, low efficient. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Well, that's because they didn't have good efficient, they yeah. did not have efficient wires back then. Then as wires became more efficient, mm -hmm. then they went to the high tension because high tension works better. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. So that was much older, older aircraft. I've never even worked old as I am I've never worked on one that has that so even World War II stuff is is already into the, the high tension stuff so all aircraft all aircraft aircraft now when I say all aircraft um, the word aircraft excludes ultralights because that is just flying lawn chair furniture so <laughs> <laughs> Right. All aircraft that I know of, um, and of, and of course these statements they're rapidly almost becoming obsolete. Uh, now we're getting into uh, a lot of really cool home builds with uh, Rotax engines and uh, Subaru engines, Jabiru engines. What's that? As a what? Huh? Uh, gyrocopter. Gyrocopter. Yeah. I said aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, the, use dual, dual ignition. All right, what do I mean by dual ignition? Do I mean this? No, no. no not in this context. That's a dual magneto. Dual ignition means two separate ignition systems. It could be one of these D3000s, or this is a D2000, uh, dual, um, or it could be two of these, or w one of these and, and electronic, but some way or another, two completely separate, independent, so if one fails, the other one keeps going. And of course, the reason why is because, number one, you get two spark plugs per cylinder, two spark plugs, P-L-U-G, plugs, Per cylinder. Why would I want two spark plugs per cylinder? What's that? Because because you can make more money selling these. Safety. <laughs> what's a, what's a what's a uh, what's a spark plug cost? Do I, have, I don't have any owners in here. But what's a spark plug cost for your airplane? OG is very expensive. It's a very good guess. <laughs> so the cheap ones are going to run you about 35, 36 40, bucks. 45 right now. That's about the expensive ones are going to cost you over 150 bucks each. And you need eight of them. You need eight if you have a four cylinder. If you have a six cylinder, you need 12. If you've got a Baron, you need 24 because there's two six cylinder engines. If you have a radial engine, you're going to need at least, well, I should say at least. They make five cylinder radials, so at least 10. But, uh, you can tell us that. Three and a half huh? grand. You can touch that. So, well, yes, at uh, the place where I used to work, they uh, they ran into a problem. They hired a they hired a mechanic, who they were trusting to gap spark plugs, and they were gapping them too close. And you are not supposed to ungap a spark plug. If you gap it too close to the electrode, you know what you do with it? Throw it away. And they let the guy go, and for the next year. Every airplane that came in, the company had to buy new spark plugs. Damn. So they went through tens of thousands of dollars in spark plugs. So don't do that. All right, uh, so two spark plugs per cylinder. So that gives you a more efficient burn. More efficient fuel mm -hmm. burn. Who's got a car with dual uh, ignition? <laughs> yeah, all diesels must have it. I'm sure they do. <laughs> Nobody? I can think of two cars that had it, and they're opposite ends of the spectrum. Mercedes. Mercedes and Ford Rangers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, Ford Rangers used it. Can you have a zoom zoom? Uh, no, and this is probably years. probably why it started safety with redundancy right because you have dual so if one magneto fails you still got the other one hopefully. If one spark plug fails you still got the other one hopefully if you remember to change out the bag 
Mad Magneto when it failed the first time. Well, you're yeah. going to reach out while you're flying and change it? <laughs> All right, operating theory. Uh, let's see. Should we do a picture? Should we go to a picture? Can I move that? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. We're going to talk about operating. T H E O R Y. Theory. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. Operating theory. Yeah. You have the harness going from the mag to the where, where anyway where it jumps to the spark plug. Where it uh, jumps to the spark plug. Uh, like you didn't connect the harness to the spark plug, but left it laying out. <laughs> yeah. So kind of. So why not? Have, could you run two harnesses off of, or one harness off of the boat? We're going to say off of both. What? Of them to. The, Basically, like a double cap that goes in the leads. Yeah. So oh, like take this one right here and just run. Ignition harness, well, this one because it's built, and just split it and put. So, because you wouldn't then need two spark plugs, you could just use the one. Or so well, what happens if you lose a spark plug? You want that. You want dual ignition. You want two spark plugs, and they go opposite. One goes in the top, one goes in the bottom. And you want them that way because they fire off and they start the burn going towards the middle and out. You want that. So, it's a good thing that there's two spark plugs. They take advantage of that for. For efficiency and more power, so don't you don't want to try and get rid of it. And right, I'm going to move it. Nope. <laughs> Not anymore. All right. So. All right. So in a mag in a, in a magneto. Let's see if we can we can kind of draw one here. Oh, uh, let's think. All right. So we have three distinct circuits. All right, we'll start with the baseball. Magnetic. So our first, first one's going to be the, the magnetic circuit. And the magnetic circuit is going to consist of the rotating magnet, pole shoes, pole shoe extensions. That's this part right here. Uh-oh, it's not. And then a soft iron core. I was looking it up. Well, soft iron is just iron. What? Soft iron is just iron. You wanted this brand new soft iron. I'm sorry, what? I was looking it up. You were looking it up, and? Soft iron is just iron. Soft iron is just iron. Why do they make it just called an iron core? Why? Because it's soft. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's iron. It's not, it, when you get hit in the head with it, <laughs> it's, it's not soft, soft iron. It's like softball. Okay, so this is our, our my magnetic circuit right here. All right, so I've got, probably should have made it bigger, but oh well. So I've got, what do I got? Rotating, Rotating magnet. magnet. Pole, Pole shoes. shoes. Pole, Pole shoe extensions and the soft, soft, soft iron core. core. All right, so that, that makes up the circuit. And when this goes around, <laughs> depends on which way. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up. So I'm just going to stop right here since, Left hand and right since right. you're going to be the smart ass and bring it up. <laughs> What's the number on that, Kevin? What's the number? <laughs> what's the number? Of what your smart-ass comment yeah, on, on this one? Yeah. Well, it's gonna be it could be either S six R N or S six L N. What I want right I'm now. Curious which that particular mag was. Well, I don't know because I don't have a. Uh, I don't have a thing, one. so it could be. All right. Anyway, this is like one of those. The wrench size is not the freaking bolt size. I'm gonna change it to freaking bolt size. The wrench size is not the bolt size. I said that, right? Yeah. We're, okay, coming to this next class. Oh, don't you dare. Especially, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. This, this is the same thing. Don't make me. Um, <laughs> the direction of the rotation of any accessory, magneto, alternator, generator, fuel pump, Vacuum pump. Start. I don't care what it is. The direction of rotation is when viewed from the drive. I will see you. <laughs> from the drive in. The direction of rotation of this magneto is when looked at the drive in. So whose perspective is it? The mechanics. The mechanics perspective. 
That becomes very important because if I'm a pilot and I'm flying a light combing or a small continental, it's going to be like that in front of me. If I'm flying a big bore continental, it's going to be flexing that at me. So you can't be pilot's perspective because some engines are this way and some are that way. Not to mention if it's in a continental, in a Skymaster, it the engine's backwards in this. Well, that's a 360, didn't matter. So anyway, so the direction of rotation of all accessories is when viewed from the driving right. 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 So if I said this is a right-hand rotating mag, and you look at it like this, you're in so much trouble. <laughs> huh? No, she, they don't. So the right hand goes this way, and the left hand goes that way. And if you and if you or clockwise or counterclockwise, and if you have trouble with that, get a watch that looks like that. So I will actually I still do that. Um, so when we get into 312 and 313, I swear to you, that's how many semesters from now? That's like a year from now, and I would still have people putting fuel pumps on the fuel pump stand, looking at it this way, going, I've got it going right hand. How come it's not pumping? Because you did that. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a fuel guy? <laughs> okay. Put fuel in the plane. Though. The direction of rotation is when viewed from the? Driver. All right, so the primary circuit consists of the rotating magnet, the pole shoes, pole shoe extensions, and the regular iron core, if you're on this. <laughs> and it's laminated, and why is it laminated? Any All right, from any currents. All right, now we have the primary, the primary circuit. I want that to be green. There it is, green. The primary circuit. All right, primary circuit is going to consist of? Ground. We'll start with the ground. Okay. Go to ground. Ignition switch. I don't know. And that didn't work out as well as I wanted to. There we go. The uh, primary winding, capacitor, and breaker points. Breaker points. Does a dual mag have the same mag uh, magnet? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it looks the same. Doesn't have. I think that's a four pole. Yeah. All right. So we have the. So what do we have? The capacity is green show up okay? Yeah. Not really. Not really? It's hard to see. All right, sorry. Well, I'm not going to erase it and change it. All right. So the primary circuit consists of ignition switch, primary coil, capacitor, breaker points, cam. That's correct. Okay. Is this on or off right now? Ignition switch is open. It is on. It is on. All right. What color do you want? Red? All right. So then I have a... Lots of windings. My secondary... Consists of secondary coil, the distributor rotor, distributor finger, distributor block, which I didn't draw all of those things in, and our spark plugs, and ignition harness, ignition harness and spark plugs. Is the carbon brush just considered part of the rotor? Yeah, I just consider part of the rotor. All right, let's see if I can do this here. Green, you don't want me to use green. If I take the rotating magnet and the pole shoes and the soft iron core, such as this is built right here. Can you see this one? It's got nothing in it, but just a magnet. And the magnet goes around, it's all it's got. So if I were to hook this up to the magneto test stand 
and I were to run it, and I would look at what what I get out of this, it's really going to look like that, but symmetrical. <laughs> so I've got a spot here, which I will call full register. I will have a spot here, we'll make that the middle spot, which is neutral. I tried. <laughs> Neutral. I could just use PowerPoint slides. And sit, I could just use PowerPoint slides and sit here like this and just kind of death by PowerPoint. How about it? <laughs> All right. Uh, full register. What is this spot here called? Neutral. 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 And what is this spot down here called? Full register. Full register the other way. So this is the static flux curve. So it's just what you get if you have just a rotating magnet going around in there. So again, it's this one right here. Do I have a coil? No, nope, no coil, no distributor, no nothing. I just, that's all I got out of that. So that's going to go round and round. But it doesn't live that way. I've got some coils in there. So uh, a couple things we need to know. One, I would just go with this. So I got my coil. We'll go talk about my coil right there. Um, even though my colors don't match, I'm going to use, I'll use blue right now. Blue right now. So um, what I get is the way this magneto works is the magnet, do I have this in full register or neutral right now? Full register. full register. So what's happening is lines of flux now are coming around, going through the soft iron core, if you like it or not. And because it's going around like this, it's creating a magnetic field that is growing and collapsing and growing and collapsing and it grows, reverses back and forth, right? And so this flux is expanding across the primary and contracting and building and contracting and so that in itself of itself is going to induce voltage and current in the primary now we talked about lens law and so we get this this build up of I read I don't know we get this build up of magnetic flux going in the primary. So what ends up happening is because of the way they interact, you have what's called a resultant flux curve. So instead of looking like this, what happens is remember that um, the way they interact, trying to keep it somewhat simple, the way they interact is as this flux curve wants to fall and die off, we have a buildup of flux in the primary and that opposes any sort of change, Lenz law. So we have an opposition of change. So rather than it falling off like that, it kind of holds on, right? Because of Lenz law. It is, as that, that, that flux is going away, what does Lenz law say? Hey, don't, don't go away. You got to stay, you know? Yeah, you got to stay. So it does. It stays. Well, the rotating magnet, it, it wants to drop off and go away. But because it's staying for a while, then it gets out here, and then it would start to fall off. Well, what happens is, here we have neutral. <coughs> neutral. We have this thing called E-gap, which stands for efficiency gap. And E-gap, the textbook definition that I think you should have for E-gap is, what is E-gap? It is the number of degrees past neutral at which the points open. That's what I like to hear. E gap is what? Number, number of degrees past neutral points open. All right. So it doesn't happen here. It happens and just so happens that most Bendix magnetos are about 10 degrees. It doesn't have to be, but the one you're working with, it's 10. All right. Um, so what's going to happen about 10 degrees past neutral, the points open. So we have this, this flux curve that, I suppose if left on its own, it's going to eventually start to die off. But we don't leave it to its own. We let it build up out to here and then open up the breaker points and then it just falls. And so when it falls from here to here, that is a sudden and rapid change and collapse in the primary circuit. Yes? Yes. Okay. That primary circuit had built up across the secondary circuit. So we have the magnetic 
lines of flux in the magnet go around through the core. That induces a voltage and current in the primary. The voltage and current in the primary are built up and expand across the secondary. At the E-gap position, the points will open, suddenly and rapidly collapsing the primary voltage, which has been cut across the secondary, inducing a very large voltage in the secondary. And then it starts all over again, but it kind of does it in reverse. My drawing's not symmetrical, so it looks funny, but it does that. And then builds back up, and it holds it out till neutral, and then falls off again. So that's what we get, keeping it somewhat simple. And that's how it works. I feel that was too simple. <clears throat> Follow? You savvy? Okay. Now, if I were to close this little switch right here, there's a ground right there. And I feel like I'm missing a ground here. Um, yeah, primary needs another ground to it. That's what I need. I drew mine very different. There, there's a ground. All right, so uh, with this closed, sorry, with it open, let's go with it open. And I will use uh, blue. I have a path through, I should have made that green, sorry, green, we'll make this green because it's be consistent. There we go. Okay. So with this set up like this, I'm going to look. Do I have a path? All right. So here's a path through the primary. So it's going to build up. And then when the points open, there's no path. Okay. Um, probably shouldn't have put that there. Sorry. Uh, I shouldn't have put that there. Well, the way I drew it, it's kind of not working out the way I want it to for, for, for good purposes here. Uh, what's that? You can, you can leave. Bye-bye. All right. When this is closed over here, the problem is it never – I should have put this, this kind of on this side, the way it's drawn. It's kind of weird. I'm trying to make it work. But um, with this closed, we have a ground here, and so we never lose a ground. It's almost like putting it – I probably should have put the ignition switch here is what I should have done. That would work better. That will solve all of my problems. Yes, I will have no problems left in life. You gotta go home. Except me. Well, I was thinking, actually, Brett. So, there we go. If I put this over here, then everything will make more sense. Then I can put this here and put a ground there. Now I'll be happy. Sorry, hope you used a pencil. All right, so back to this. So between oops, here and here, I have a path. And when I open this, I have no path, right? Except if I decide to put that there. Now, what happens when I open the points? Still grounded. Well, instead of going that way, it's just fine. I want to go this way. Don't really care. So, do the, so you never get this sudden collapse here. It just kind of follows the, the resultant curve. So you, you get a slow change in flux. If you get a slow change in flux from this primary to the secondary, you get how much high voltage? None. So um, I want to say you, you can get a little bit of a shock off of it. Like if you were to put your, your finger on the breaker points and turn it fast enough, you might, you might feel it on the, secondary, or the primary a little bit. But anyway, so that's why the ignition switch, when the ignition switch is grounded, the magneto is off. Please say off. And when it's open, it is on because then the points work. So this makes the points kind of non, non-existent. But when you remove this and open, now the points work. Got it? Got it. All right. Want me to write some notes about that? Or want me just to keep moving on? All right, go back to black. So Magneto, let's see, we had the low tension, we had the operating theory. All right, so operating theory. And this <laughs> I. There are three circuits in a Magneto. There are three circuits. 
And you're hoping I was saying circus, but I wasn't. In a magneto. They are one, two, and three. What are they? Magnetic, primary, secondary. The magnetic circuit, the primary, and the secondary. Let's look at each one of them. The magnetic circuit. Consists of a what, Brett? Rotating magnet. Rotating magnet. Pull shoes. Pull shoe extensions. Oh, you missed a bunch of stuff. Consists of a rotating magnet. Hey, by the way, speaking of rotating magnets, in your project, I had you demagnetize the rotor. You would never do that in a real one. You just remagnetize what you have. You don't take. Re I was thinking about that today. I was like, that is very strange. Yeah, you don't do that. I just do that for a classroom <laughs> thing, so you can kind of experiment with a dead dead one. Otherwise, no, you just simply recharge it. You have an expensive machine to play with. Yes, I have a expensive toy to play with. The magnet can be a four. Oops. Two, four, six, or, or or even eight pole. You have a lot of poles. So it's Two and four pole oh, poor, pole are most common. Uh, let's see, rotor. I think this might be a Q&A. Rotor is made of, anybody know? Almico. 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 Al, Al for aluminum. Nickel and cobalt. Oh, you're missing iron, but. How would we write that one? Al for Nico? <laughs> <laughs> Al Nico. So it's aluminum, aluminum, <coughs> aluminum alloy, actually. So I don't know which one. Alloy, iron, uh, nickel, and cobalt. So that's what it's made out of. If I had to describe its magnetic properties, which you should be able to do now, it has, what would you describe it as? Wire. Has what? Permanent it's a permanent magnet. Very good. That is one of them. Uh, how would you describe the magnetic properties of it? From some of the words we learned yesterday. Or some of the words I said yesterday. I don't know. I learned it. Has what? High retentivity. What does that mean? What's that? That holds that magnetism for a very long period of time. That's a good thing. I would hate to take apart my magneto every week to recharge it. It has very high retentivity. So what do you think that would say about its reluctance? Oh. Yeah, it doesn't want to be charged, but once it's there, it's there. Um, speaking of that, uh, let me see if I don't mention it somewhere else. Um, once you charge your magnet, you should put some sort of keeper on there because it wears out a magnet when it has to go, when the magnetic lines of flux have to find their way through the air, and it wears it out. But if you have <coughs> steel wrapped around it, soft iron steel or just plain steel, it, the magnetic lines of flux will go through that steel and it doesn't wear it out quite as much. So we have the pole shoes. They are made of laminated, laminated sections of soft iron. And that prevents eddy currents. Eddy 
Uh, and let's see, it's high, high permeability. What does that mean? Lines of flux can easily flow through it. How about that? All right. Which means that we probably have low retentivity. Meaning it's not going to stay. So it's not going to stay magnetized. That's a good thing because if it stayed magnetized, then when the magnet came around the other way, it would have to demagnetize it. And it takes energy then to change it. And that ends up, well, we'll talk about the hysteresis loop, about what that means at some other time. Pole shoes, what comes next? Pole shoe extensions. And that just allows, it's really part of the pole shoe, um, just follows it, same thing. I wrote, uh, allows the lines of flux to be transferred from the pole shoes to the coil core. Probably, probably skip that. And we, then we have the coil core. Made of the same material as pole shoes, made of same material as pole shoes. and completes the magnetic circuit. Oh boy, we're ready for the operation. I don't know here. Pretty much talked about it. Not pretty much, I actually did. All right, so as the magnet rotates, the magnetic, as the magnet rotates, the magnet lines up with the pole shoes and completes a magnetic circuit, which is pretty much what I, I'll go back. Just, what I have here, right? So as the magnets line up, goes through the pole shoes, pole shoe extensions, and the and the coil core, and we complete what is known as a magnetic circuit. circuit. All right, so that right there is, and then called what? Full register. All right. What does not full register look like? Neutral. 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 I'm going to put it in red here. So, so if the magnets are right here. North is there and south is there. That's called neutral. And the reason why at that point it's neutral, I'll just use red, is that um, the magnetic lines of flux just flow through this way. And is that going through the coil core? No. No, so it's got nothing. It's called, say it's short circuited. Okay, so I'm back. See, it, it came back. Oh, thank goodness. All right. As the magnet, as the magnet, as the magnet rotates, magnet rotates, the magnet lines up with the pole shoes. with the pole shoes and completes completes a magnetic circuit magnetic circuit this is known as full register this is known as full register Full register would be north, south, and the pole shoes right here.
There. So that's full register. At this point, maximum. Maximum lines of flux. Travel through the pole shoes and the coil core. Maximum lines of flux. Travel through. The pole shoes. And coil core. Does any of the lines of flux per se, per se, that's kind of a weird thing to say. Does it actually, am I sending lines of flux through any of the uh, coil, uh, any of the coils? <coughs> and, and I think that's an important point because during a lot of the orals, I kind of get the feeling that the way you see this, and I'll be done in a minute, is that we have the pole shoes like this, and then coming off of here, we have a coil that goes like that. Is that in any way, shape, or form accurate? No, no. This is totally false. It does not do that. So don't, do, don't say that. Stop saying it. All right, so to land coil core, let's see, we have three. As the magnet continues to rotate, as the magnet continues to rotate, continues to rotate, what happens? Okay, the <coughs> lines of flux get stronger or weaker? Okay, decrease through the pole shears. And that's that. So we have full register, went from full register, now we're starting to decrease down to the neutral position. There will be a point where the magnet reaches neutral and the lines of flux do not travel through the poles. So there will be, be a point where the magnet reaches neutral, neutral, and the lines of flux do not travel through the poles. How about two quick points will be done. So as the magnet continues to rotate, the flux lines reverse and build back up. As the magnet continues to rotate, the flux lines reverse and build back up. In a graph, this looks like AC, alternating current, and is known as the static flux curve. And it looks like this, but symmetrical. And that is all I have to say about that. Hey, yes. Oh, okay. So the question on the floor is, can we come into the lab half hour?